All right, why don't we get started, and then if we, um, fortune, we we'll get Chris to join us, and we can go from there. Um, so I'll call the meeting to order for the uh, subcommittee for the performance audit, um, our second, um, uh, third meeting, I guess. Um, Minutes were uh, minutes were taken by Representative Cordelli last time. He's kind enough to do it. Uh, looks like he's going to be kind enough to do it once again for us. Uh, they are distributed, and if everyone's seen them, I'd like to accept the minutes as as distributed. Unless so we have questions, yeah. Thank you. Second. Okay. Uh, so all in agreement. Aye. 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 So uh, I just asked Representative Cordelli to. Uh, he had already sent the. Um, Minutes off to uh, Representative Umberger, and we'll send a copy into uh, into the uh, commissioner's office so that we have it on file. So, one of the one of the uh, items we decided last last uh, meeting that we were going to move forward with. Well, we decided we we're going to move forward with performance audit, and we thought that we'd be best uh, to concentrate our limited funds on the commissioner's office. If an opportunity, if we find that we can expand that scope some, then we will. But uh, and the idea was that we would start the audit, uh, the auditing process. Hey, Chris. Good morning. Sorry. <coughs> and on Mark's time, you're really pretty good. So let's. Uh, the um, so we just started. Uh, just bring Representative Lavender up to speed with where we got to uh, last meeting. Um, and that we decided that we were going to uh, start with the commissioner's office um, and we're hoping to set up a framework that as funds and uh, come forward in the future uh, that we'll use this as our model uh, to look at all the other departments so we can go through that process. <coughs> so we had said uh, in leaving that that it would be nice if uh, we could put together uh, some sort of a uh, draft that we could start looking at, and uh, I'd asked uh, Representative Cordelli to uh, to do that, which he was kind enough to commit a lot of time to, and I believe we've all got the document here in front of us. So we can sign to Yeah, we'll be fine. Great as this work is uh, has begun, uh, please bear in mind as you're looking at a copy that this is this is just a draft, and by the time we get done with this, it's very likely it's going to look very different than where you're at. So um, don't don't commit this as anything in stone, but I think it's a great uh, uh, jumping off point for us. So uh, anyone have any questions before we have Steve run through on his thoughts as where we are? Go ahead. Plan. I'm sorry. That's okay. Then why don't you just uh, tell us how you arrived here? Okay. Should we, uh, if we point through, if you want to comment, or you want to wait until it's done? I'll, I'll go through by Section? sections. Sections. Mm -hmm. That works. Okay. 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 <clears throat> so um, this was um, based on uh, looking at performance audits from elsewhere in New Hampshire and other places around the country to get try and get a format and some uh, typical language. Um, so I uh, did underline and put in italics a number of areas including the scope that I thought that you know we could um, you know make, uh, make some decisions on um, for the next draft. Um, started out with an overview, um, a purpose of the RFP, and I wanted to identify a contact person, um, which I've left blank, uh, thinking that anyone responding to the RFP should uh, go through this one person um, and not through the commissioners or anyone else at the county, maybe not someone from the delegation you know, running the show, basically in terms of uh, any questions or 
Yeah. 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 Probably should be Marcus Schumann, too. On the subcommittee? Yeah, yeah. Chair. I'm, I was just, I was, uh, myself, for no. a number of sure. Right. Pull that in. Okay. Um, the next section I had was uh, a background. Um, uh, you know, I think we should include a description of the the county, the operations, the the structure, an organizational chart if we can find one. Um, basic good. background information, um, and I think as we had discussed at the last meeting. Um, in written policies, there are. Um, my understanding from the last meeting that there uh, seems to be uh, a movement to have um, uh, written financial controls from each of the departments um, being drafted, and so you know we can include that. I think would be uh, a great uh, help and um, a basis for some of the work that the uh, uh, winning firm. Performs. Would you want? Would you want the job description there also? At least that would be. Yeah. Yeah. Can I add that? I would think that we might want to put most of the background as an appendix in the in the back. Okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. Yeah. 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 In the back of the RF. Or yeah, in the back, the back of the RFP. Okay. I mean, maybe put a description of Harold County up here. Mm -hmm. The rest of it, because that's mostly stuff that they won't use for reference. I yeah, agree. Good point. Okay. So I'll leave it. Uh, we can leave space here for uh, the description of the county and yeah. so forth, and then um, everything else, the org chart and employees and so yeah. forth, we put in an appendix in the back. Mm -hmm. Okay. There's probably a good old mission statement. That's about all you usually put there. The organization mm -hmm. mission statement. Right. <clears throat> um, just in terms of that information, um, how should we gather that information? Should someone from our subcommittee make a request? of that information or go through you, Mark, or Karen, or? I, I think once once we have our formalized list, let's just put someone in charge of it. And, okay. And, uh, I think it would be, be better if we keep track of it. Uh, okay, then I guess the main area was the scope of work. And I had um, basically nine bullet points here were numbered points um, as the basis for the scope of work um, really as a result of our last meeting. Um, starting out with the commissioner's office slash administration, um, financial controls, and uh, how they review um, controls of the county department. And that's where I think that any written um, financial control policies that are being drafted would come into play in terms of the review this to see what is in place and what isn't. This is not going to cover just financial control. So right, it's going to correct. Covering the whole way yes. they operate. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think I think we're weighted in mm -hmm. here in, in financial. financial. Yeah, we're we're, we're, we're going to let's let's take where we are and then let's see because yeah. I, I agree we're going to want to add more. Right. Yeah. 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 But this. Um, then uh, adherence by the departments to the um, established policies in terms of financial controls, then adherence to established policies governing, um, this was where um, Chris made a number of points in the last meeting, uh, hiring practices, grievance procedures, overtime approval, and employee time reporting. Uh, Trivially, I'd say employee time reporting system in case they've never heard of Kronos. Okay. In the trivia today. It's fine. Yes, sure. um, then also um, review uh, policies for uh, bidding for materials and services, issuance of RFPs, uh, contract reviews. I think maybe, Mark, you brought that up at the last meeting. Um, and also 
um, adherence to the policies and applicable state statutes. Um, fifth was report on any assessments by the commissioners or the administration of departmental performance. Um, then um, asking the winning firm to make policy and operational recommendations in relation to one financial controls and reporting um, uh, and basically uh, ways that we could achieve better fiscal responsibility. Just, just a question back there on the seven where you're talking about related to department performance. You're also including commission performance in that because they're part of the department, right? Yeah, I think uh -huh. so. That's what I was wondering. Is number five, are you referring to a self-evaluation of the commissioners by the commissioners? No. Or are you referring to the commissioners evaluating the other departments? I was thinking more of the commissioners um, evaluating departmental performance. But, um, uh, you know, we could, you know, revise that to um, have the firm, you know, look at performance of the commissioners as well. Let's hold off on that because I don't think okay. that's quite where I was going. Okay. Thank you for clarifying. Okay. Um, number seven was um, make policy and operational uh, recommendations. Um, this really gets into also the subject we raised last week of last meeting of um, measuring performance or metrics. And hopefully the firm could um, use or provide some, you know, boilerplate recommendations in terms of uh, some of the metrics that we could use. Um, number eight was uh, recommendation for anything organizationally in terms of the structure or staffing, and this um, was where I tied in the possibility uh, of uh, a county administrator position and whether they felt that might be needed, um, as well as other operational efficiencies that they um, were able to determine during their review. And uh, last, gets in really to the future, um, anything that they find that they think um, would benefit from further analysis in the future as a, a future uh, performance audit. Okay. And that last one, could we give them a list of things that we don't need them to tell us about? And not in this RFP, but I, I'd be against that. I don't think we should do, I don't think we should give them anything for a walk yet. I, I, well, yeah, I don't want to tie their hands. Yeah, I don't want to walk that thinking, but I don't want them to tell us things we already know. Well, this is just, uh, well, my intent here know. was just, yeah. you know, <laughs> in the future you might consider looking at, yeah. you know, um, you know, centralized purchasing, or you know, this or that, or give me an example, Tom. Centralized purchasing. Right. Although they might give some recommendations. Well, I I believe somehow in here we're it's, it's more than more than likely something we're going to want them to look at, and make a recommendation, and so. Are, are you saying that that's, that's an example of something you think that should be considered or something you don't want them telling us about? I don't want them spending a lot of time okay. telling us, you know, that, that looking into things that, that they're not supposed to be looking into just for the future. I mean, so maybe in here emphasize that this is just... Um, I mean, uh, like areas for the future and you know not anything that we want them to look at in detail at this point that's is that fine. what you're that's fine I, yeah I just don't want them to spend a lot of money doing right I guess I have a little problem defining that uh, well so do I if you if you if you if I've got something wrong for example let's take purchasing I've got something wrong <clears throat> and I should be making a whole bunch of changes quote for the future wouldn't I want that pointed out now so that I know that this is something that needs to be done in the future? I don't mind them pointing it out. I just don't want them to spend a lot of time digging into it. 
I mean, if they say, gee, if they look and say, gee, you need central, you ought to think about centralized purchasing, that's fine. I don't want them to dig into it and, and spend time, which is money, what if, what if, because we know we want to do that in the future. But if they already had centralized purchasing, just assume that they did for a moment, and they found that there were some errors or things that needed to correct them, maybe you want to explain that, right? Absolutely. Okay. I, I think to Tom's point, I, I agree with, with a lot of what you just said. I, we, we need to, this, this, this RFP needs to be specific in what we're looking at. Yeah. And we don't, we don't want them to get right. into the point that they're wandering off and coming mm -hmm. off with other things. Okay. So, uh, to both your points, I, I agree with Tom, this needs to be focused to where we are. What's what's the thoughts on the on the items? Because it's just it's the line at this point that um, Glenn has uh, pointed out. I, I I'm just going to say that I, I think that we could condense a, quite a few of them on the, on the financial side into you know certain points of action you know to include all of these things. Um, but you know I definitely would. Uh, Tom had mentioned earlier, but I think on paragraph eight you need to not have to but. Yeah, that's right. I'm sorry, what was, what was the comment? What I put on, on paragraph 8, yeah. where it says including but limited to, it should be not limited. Correct, yeah. <clears throat> okay. And I think along the lines of what you were saying, we could just reorder them a little bit yeah. to put all the financials together. Um, I'd also like to ask the commissioners what they feel their responsibilities and challenges are before we finish the list. Do, we, do the commissioners have a job description? Formal job description? Is it such a thing for commissioners? I don't know. We can find that out for our next time. Yeah. I, I, um, I, I think we've got plenty enough time to do exactly what you've suggested. So the point would be to ask the commissioners. What was your, your point again? Oh, uh, what they their responsibilities and challenges as being make that grammatically correct whenever you can. <laughs> and I'm just going to think out loud for a minute and I'm proposing this but sometimes the people who work um, work on the details, have a better or a different perspective. So I wonder if there's any value to asking some of the people in the office if they have suggestions that would, for. That would, be the, that would be the job of the people going to the audits. Right? Yeah. Okay. I would agree. Yeah. Chris, you're unusually quiet. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you for noticing, <laughs> I guess. Um, well, first of all, I'd like to thank Glenn for, you know, putting this together. It looks like you put it, well, it doesn't look like it's obviously put a lot of time and effort into putting something together that is certainly uh, be very usable. Um, yeah. I like what I see. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, from what I've heard on number nine, um, you know, maybe trying to be a little more specific, but, you know, in the idea of that the auditors are going to, going to compare, which I believe was kind of making a revision about the organizational structure, you know, number eight kind of leads into number nine. If you're looking at number eight, here is our structure and what we're doing here, and they're juxtaposing it to other counties, and they're doing something that is critically different whatever it might be, centralized purchasing, whatever it might be. Um, and we're not doing it. We, whether it's that county administrator that we don't have, that other counties do, and, or, or centralized purchasing. That, those two kind of come together when you make recommendations about something that's critical, maybe broad scope of what we're not doing, um, that they feel might be most beneficial. You know, that would be... I guess part of the wording maybe in that number nine is to identify key organizational structures that we may be, should be looking into an institute. 
you know, that that's, they've evaluated, this is something you really should be doing. You know, we want them to tell us their high, you know, recommend, you know their highest recommendation. Um, Can I ask a question at this point? Sure. Um, so, are we specifically asking them to compare our county with other counties? And if so, A, I think we need to say that, and B, does that increase the scope enough, like too much? What we're asking them to do. Wouldn't they subconsciously be doing this anyway? If, if this is the type of job that they do, they would, they would know what would know eventually. I mean, maybe we should ask them, but they should know what other companies are doing. What's, maybe the other companies aren't doing it right either. I don't know. But right. They should be making recommendations that well, pertain to what we're doing. It, I think what we're trying to do is, is hopefully set up a a structure that helps the the commissioners more effectively perform their position and and if whatever that might be you know we as we said that statutorily they are given certain powers that they do and you know the idea would be to help them, put them in a position that they could effectively do it and not necessarily expect them to be um, have tremendous expertise in contract law, to have tremendous expertise in land development, you know, to get them set up so they would be truly what they are, a board of people administrating the county, instead of a board of people who may or may not have specific backgrounds that really make them effective to do that. So that's, you know, and make, making sure that, that that lines up. So that's part of the organizational structure that, you know, I sometimes wonder about, you know, are we just putting them in a position that, that they can effectively administrate what they're doing? You know, I, I find that Pretty similar well. in the delegation. You know, we you tend really. to not have enough, we rely on kind of our own little bits and pieces, but we don't have enough continuity from delegation to delegation that helps us you really have no control over whether or not they have a background to do this because you don't know what they like to Exactly to my point. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it is effective to have it, like someone who is professionally trained to be the administrator and can help be effectual in not making sure we don't get into trouble with a, you know, human resources. Maybe it isn't, but I, I just think that that's part of it. That's part of what they should be looking at. Are, is this, is there a difference in our structure than other county structures that might be lending itself to the fact that we have certain issues that are arising, that we do have a cash control issue that arise, that we do have employee grievances that are arising? That, you know, and maybe we could, you know, structure it that way. You know? Correct. And I, I don't, I don't see where that has too much tie in with the other counties. Right? We're talking about. Oh, I was just going to say. So if we do expect our county to other counties, I think it should be spelled out here, that, that that is our expectation. I think it's going to bog us down if we do First, I'd like to know what we're doing, period. And I, and I can't, I have yet to talk to somebody in the county who can tell me what we're doing. Nobody knows. And I think we need to define that and get it squared away before we do anything else. Then, then if we want to compare it, that's fine. But, but uh, My thought was that if, when we gather all the written policies and procedures, be they uh, deal, dealing with time reporting or financial controls or employee relations or whatever, um, and present that to the winning firm, that that is going to draw out a lot of information about, you know, what is going on and what is not going on and give them, you know, really the basis for, you know, making some of these recommendations. Seems to me because I, I was trying to also in speaking to your point in terms of the how broad the scope is and the cost and everything, you know, if we give them all this written documentation up front, you know, uh, that'll cut down on some of the legwork that they have to do, and uh, that's why some of the things I I phrased it the way I I did in terms of whether you know there are policies in place and whether the county is adhering to those policies. Okay, Tom? 
Yeah, it, it seems to me that, that while we're here to create an RFP, that in reality the whole effort is a very long-term effort, and this is the beginning, and that perhaps in comparison to other counties, and the counties are different. We don't have an executive committee, the southern counties do. And it just seems to me that that, that, that comparison can sort of come up in, in future um, efforts. The, um, I want to go back to, uh, so, so perhaps for the next, the next meeting, uh, we can ask to gather, you know, as much of this background information we have, and if they can put that together as a uh, uh, PDF and get it out to us ahead of time, so we've got, you know, we get a reasonable uh, read on that. I'm hoping it's volumes and we can get it down to something small. Uh, but also to a, a point that, that you had made, uh, Susan, on the uh, asking commissioners what they see as challenges and responsibilities, I think we should ask them what their goals are. What is it they're doing? What are their goals? And how, how are they getting there? Because I, do, I you know, my, that should be a major as much as an emphasis of the financial end for us is going forward. So, so let's ask them the question. But um, you know, we don't, we don't want to list the things that aren't working well. Uh, you know, uh, but you know, what what are their goals? And what what do they see as, as the reason for having that office? And, you know, if it was uh, if it was the sheriff's department, it'd be something as simple as uh, 911 calls and. Uh, how quick they respond, how many people it took, and so forth. There's got to be a matrix for how they're how they're getting there, something that we can measure. So let's ask them if they're if they're in the middle of that process. Um, and you know, the, the meeting was to develop an RFP. I see this as Tom mentioned. It's it's going to take a few to get us there. So um, any other thoughts on this? I'm I'm thinking we take a look at our nine action items. And um, let's see if we can condense that down into uh, two or three with some subcategories and uh, for, the, for the next meeting. Um, I'll work on maybe some of that. Uh, and everyone else is welcome too on uh, what the goals of the uh, commissioner should be. And, um, so if that's all right with everyone, why don't we look at that for the next meeting? Any further discussion on that? Before we move on? Damon, did you want to say something? Yeah, I just had a question about um, one of the points. You know, it was interesting um, that there was a you know, grievance procedure and um, a you know, bidding procedure. I mean, I think it would be interesting, and I'm not sure if this would be possible, but instead of looking at how every bid was conducted, I'm not sure if that was your intent, but there are particular bidding projects that raised a lot of questions and, and just became kind of uh, convoluted. Like the wood, wood pellet boiler project got, <coughs> that, that bidding process and that installation process got, got away from the county a little bit. I want to see if maybe the auditor could look at specific instances where things seem, where the problem seems to be. Like there are two grievance issues or, or two problems with the HR employees like what happened there and like an audit of those particular problems I think would be instructive. Okay. Well so we'll take that into account. Let's um let's move to your, your next page here. Yeah. Uh, methodology. Um, this was both uh, for the RFP and uh, uh, after the award of the contract uh, for the Initial timeline, um, I left all the dates uh, blank, but um, I basically had the process of uh, issuing the RFP, um, uh, written questions would be provided to the contact person, um, we would uh, develop responses and get those out uh, to the respondents by such and such date, uh, the final proposals would be due by whatever date, then the um, evaluation committee, assuming we have an evaluation committee of some sorts, would get together and uh, go over the uh, proposals and uh, then send out the uh, award of uh, notification to the winning vendor and uh, issue contracts on whatever proximate date. So that was my 
idea of how you know we would proceed forward in, uh, in terms of a timeline for the RFP. Um, then process question. Sure, go ahead. Okay, so who has the authority to make the decision on who gets the contract? I was thinking we would have some kind of evaluation committee. I, I just put that in, but you know that's certainly open for discussion. Because yeah. nor but normally <coughs> our subcommittees don't enter into contracts with anybody. Whole delegation, whole delegation. We could, we could have a, in a subcommittee, we could have us, us you know, approve a couple of them, or one of them, right. or a couple of them, and then have them present to the delegation, and we could recommend which one they go with, but it's still the same. Right, so maybe insert after evaluation committee review, then um, uh, entire delegation, you know, votes on the... Yep. So could it be review and makes a recommendation? Yep. And then the um, delegation makes a decision? <clears throat> right. Great point. I have a question. On If somebody asks us a question, are we going to send the question and the answers to everybody? That, yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so everyone gets a complete set of all the questions yeah. and all the answers. Okay. I think is the fairest way to do it. Absolutely. And so, um, after the delegation approves entering into a contract with one particular firm, are there any other further, um, is that something that the commissioners have to sign on to, since no, normally no, they're the ones? Them. They don't sign on to anything, we sign on to. Yeah, that'd be that'd be my understanding. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's it's we're we're generating we're we're requiring a report to be done. We're requiring the report to come back to the delegation, and then we'll release the report once we have. Okay, is that consistent with how things are normally done? Yeah, okay. I mean, I, 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 it's, 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 <laughs> I think maybe that's the problem. Man. I don't know well, what is it, what, right around here. What is normally well, done? Like, well, since I've been on the delegation, I don't recall a time when the delegation has entered into a contract with anybody. So I'm just trying to figure. What do you mean? Oh. Um, yeah. Usually, right. we would say, "Hey, done. this needs to be done," and the commissioners would do it. So I'm wondering if they still need to be involved in it in some way since they're the ones that are effectively going to sign the checks. But the, but the ones that you're talking about where the commission's involved in it, they dealt with building projects like jail and here and so forth. They didn't, they didn't deal with the evaluation themselves, which is what this deals with, so they shouldn't be involved in it. Well, it, it seems to me that they can sign the contract. <coughs> you know, the delegation says, this is the firm we want. Sure. And right. the, Commissioners can sign the contract, and uh, whoever so pays, so pays but the what if, delegation. What if they vote them. not to sign? They, they don't get a choice to vote. They they sign it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I oh, think you're correct. Yeah, I, I think we can leave that for future discussion. Yeah, but my concern is that right. My concern is that if they're <laughs> signing the contract, there might be some expectation on either the vendor's part or their part that. You know, that they're going to be directly involved in this process in terms of questions and answers and procedures and everything else. I don't, and I don't think, think we want that. I don't think anybody should be involved with the delegation. Right. Yeah, this is, yeah, same this point. Is we, don't, we, don't want, we don't want to report, report going to them prior to going to the delegation. Uh, how do we get through the issue of somebody has to sign the contract? And, and the commissioners are the ones that essentially. Well, say that the disbursement can be made, I mean, that's kind of a sticky point. Isn't it? Yeah. I would say, we, you know, we involve uh, the delegation chairman involved in, in that decision, uh, you know. We'll, we'll figure that out. Yeah. yeah. I think that, uh, you know, Representative Lavender may have some points about, you know, exactly who's going to put their name on the contract, but the contract still will be for the delegation. Okay. The delegation is the one who initiates the performance. And so I'm overseas. But, but also that, that you know, once we put this into motion, the, the, the objective is, or, should, or at least I think should be, is that the, 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 the firm is working 
you know, pseudo independently coming in to evaluate what yeah, is absolutely. going on. It's really not us leading them of what, what the final outcome is going to be. No. So once once it gets rolling, they're going to do their thing. Right. But as far as you know, what their audit report is issued, you know, they send it to us and then we distribute it. Yeah. You know, but eventually. Take them as they come. It's going to have to, eventually it's going to come out. So. And that leads directly into the next section for the audit methodology itself. Um, and I had all communications going from the firm to the contact person. Who's part of the delegation, right? Probably Mark, yeah. Uh, uh, the contact person would arrange an initial kickoff meeting or conference call with other members of the delegation and the firm um, to go over responsibility, communication, schedule for the project and everything. Um, the contact person, this is where you might, you might want to have some discussion, would arrange meetings with uh, the commissioners, department staff, and department heads as needed. Um, I, I would say the contact person would be doing isn't, that. Isn't that potentially a ton of work? That, that was That's why we gave it tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm a little less certain about this whole section, so um, when you're done, I want to ask some sure. more questions. Um, then once final, the firm would make 15 copy, copies, I think there's 15 members of the delegation, um, and distribute that via the contact person, no copies. Uh, to anyone else um, without the contact person's approval. Um, and then my thinking was that uh, we would have a public meeting um, of the delegation at which time the firm would present their mm -hmm. uh, findings. Sure. Susan, you had a point on this? Um, I have a number of <coughs> things I need to learn about, understand. Um, so number one, the con contracted firm must direct all communications regarding the audit to the contact person. To me, that sounds very um, either broad or specific. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure which, but um, it, it makes me think mm -hmm. that someone could think that, oh, oh, no, I can't talk to you because I can only talk to him. It just seems awkward to me. Maybe there would be better wording for that. Okay. They, they would talk to everybody during the audit. Right, yeah. I but, mm -hmm. but this is just questions on the audit itself, and if we have too many fingers in the pie, it's going to get all screwed up. Chris, had a point. Right, I, I think that, <coughs> I think what's important is that they're trying to direct that communication to the contact person about spe the specificity of the audit is helpful because that person we're trying to make this person as independent as possible. You know, that's really what our objective is: is for this independent performance audit to take place, and that we don't have this person getting too influenced by the people within the departments, as opposed to, you know, here are the objectives of the audit. So if you have a question about the audit, you should direct it to, you know, the person, you know someone within this room that has the concept of well what are we what were we looking for if you have a question about well what are we really you, you put this bullet point but what does right. that mean mm -hmm. please clarify that that so, would be so that would contact be person audit <coughs> slash process questions as opposed to yeah. you know asking the commissioner how does this work or something yeah. like that well right. obviously they have yeah. to right. they, you know they have to communicate you know they have to be sure. able to communicate yeah. with the people that work here in order to find out information. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so know. maybe we could just kind of work that work that language work that one a little bit. bit. Yeah. Um, okay, and number two, kickoff meeting um, to establish responsibilities, lines of communication. I kind of thought that that was all being outlined in this scope of work here. That I'm not sure that we really needed a meeting to do that. Okay. Right. Grant your point. Um, uh, I think you know just so that everyone's on the same page. Having a kickoff meeting, you know, would help get everyone on the same page in terms of what was going on. If if they had any questions, you know, we could you know respond at that point, or uh, you know maybe even you know bring the commissioners into the kickoff meeting so that they knew what was going on also. Um, this this is after the contract has been awarded. Yes. Been awarded. Yeah. And then I would, yeah, um, I think, 
I think it would be nice. I'm not sure if we need to do it, but it would be nice, and I don't object to doing it. But I do think that we should probably strike co or conference calls since we do have to have our meetings in public. Yes. Yeah, good well, point. Yeah, we do, but, but they they're certainly can they certainly can call up Mark as a contact yes. person and ask him a question without having a public meeting. You may, you may discuss it or, or anything like that, but right. every time but, they have a question you can't have you can't schedule a meeting for two or three days. But this is only the, this is only the initial meeting. This, this is, is just the kickoff meeting. meeting. Yeah, kick so I'll I'll, yeah. I'll strike or a conference call. Chris, did you have a, a comment on that? Well, I just, I, I just think on number three, I, I think that after you have your kickoff meeting, that I, I don't know that the, con the contact person really needs to be liaisoning all the meetings between the commissioners and administrative staff. I mean, the, the person performing the audit can arrange well, those meetings right. more. Right. They, they should be more independent right. at that right point. Out. Yeah. But, but, but right somebody out. needs to... It's fine to take it out, but somebody needs to make sure that, that, that they're not being stonewalled by people. You know, the, the contact person needs to help them if they need help. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. a very good point. Yeah. That that's they could be, you know, give them authority to arrange meetings, however, yeah. that the contact person, if needed. you know, will assist in arranging if those needed. meetings if needed. If needed. That's a very, that's a very good, good point. point. Anything else on four and five? I don't understand the five <laughs> will present their report and findings to the next public meeting of the delegation. Do you want to just go at a public meeting? Yes. Okay. Probably take as scheduled by the contact person because once, right. once you have a meeting, we'll be just right. Okay. So we we'll read the firm will present their report and findings to a public meeting of the delegation. Right. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I just um, I'm stumbling a little bit on not um, not disclosing findings to anyone other than the contact person without approval. Um, That's to prevent enrollment, isn't it? I mean, you start presenting something we don't, to the we town, and we all the town, and that might not even be what we end up we with. We probably don't want an electronic copy going anywhere. Yeah. So if, if, the, if, the, if the committee needs to meet to see it, then we'll schedule a meeting, and I uh, imagine that might qualify for gosh. If somebody requests I mean, you it. talking about a short period of time. We're talking, are we talking about the report? Yeah, we're talking about the final report. And wouldn't the final report be something that the public had every right to? Right, that's what, right. That's what, what the, is the presentation, the public final, but presentation. Not, not during the process, I don't it's think. A present, it's the presentation. Number nine. The, pr the report's going to come out. Yeah. But we don't want it to be leaked until beforehand. We and have to start asking, answering questions about things that, that we haven't reported then, to publicly yet. Then could we, could we put something in there that says, um, you know, until it's presented or accepted or something like that? Because... Until accepted by the delegation, which would be at the public meeting? I, I, th I think it's fine the way it is, yeah, and then once we once we have once we have the presentation, <coughs> then the then the document's available, because it 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 could be it could be that you know there's still more to be done or something else is in there that I don't know, but we're not we're not going to release it until it's ready. And also, this makes me wonder about um, so does this. Well, I suppose the contact person could give approval for the delegation to see it. I guess I'm feeling a little uncomfortable with the secrecy around it. I don't see any um, secrecy here at all. I, I, it, all our meetings are open to public. Uh, even, even on this thing. All we're saying is, as we're working on this thing, we don't want to circulate this thing all over the state because it may not be what we end up with. Uh, uh, certainly, if anybody's welcome to come to the meeting that we have to discuss it. Yeah, certainly when we're done, the whole world can have a copy of it, as far as I'm concerned, right? right. But, uh, Chris, I don't think we both, during the process, we need that. I don't know. I don't, okay. We're contracted for work 
the work is going to be done when we're satisfied with the work that we're releasing. Go ahead, well, Chris. I believe, yeah, I believe there's some credence to that, but once again, you know, the delegation is, is not going to be part of the process. The processors are the audit firm. Right. They are the expert, independent experts that we're hiring to come in to evaluate it. Well, they're they're not, right. so to that end, they are going to give us their professional opinion about the way things are operating and make recommendations independently of us. That's the, that's the beauty of it. That's the beauty of it for us, and that's the beauty of it for the commissioners. And when it's done, it's made public. And, yeah, and they make the report, but it, there is some credence to them delivering the report to the delegation so we can read it and have some a forethought, a foreknowledge of it before it's actually released, you know, at the public meeting. So as far as how it, you know, gets distributed before we read it, there's some reasonability there. I I see that, but they're they're going to give us a report. It's an independent report, and that the value of that material is valuable because it's independent, Be, and not because it's the delegation guiding them to an answer. Okay, so I think that's important because that's what that's what gives it power is because they make a recommendation as independence. That gives it power. It gives it power to the commissioners. The commissioners can grab a hold of it too and say, hey guys, over here in financial controls, the, 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 the performance auditors said we should be doing this, so let's do it. Do you see what I mean? And the same thing with the delegation. It gives everyone that ability to take some, that, those independent eyes and it gives them a value. I, I, following up on Chris's um, points, um, I think that if, if we release the uh, report broadly without, you know, an, uh, a final meeting for presentation, then you know we'd be letting the horse out of the barn um, wrong or something. Uh, <laughs> the wrong horse or something, right? Yeah, um, uh, because. You know, someone's going to look at this, and you know, maybe it's critical of area A, and they're going to go to the next commissioners' meeting, you know, which might be the next day, and start raising questions with the commissioners. Don't and know, right. right, they and, need to see it too. I mean, right. <laughs> they just right. Right. You, know, you know, everyone needs a chance to, uh, you know, take it in and you know, evaluate, you know, what is being said. And having said that, that doesn't mean there isn't a chance for us to kind of glean it and say, um, you know, that may be true, but. You know, unfortunately, right. that like the the presentation that is not appropriate for that. You know, there's there's a limitation to what we think should be they should be saying publicly. You know, within you know a reasonability. I mean, we we would hope that these people are professional, but we don't want them writing that Commissioner X Y is a dodo. You know, <laughs> but, you, know <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there, there, but there is a limitation to what. We, or the member of the delegation is a delegation. right. Or yes, <laughs> more even more important. <laughs> there, is, well, there, is a, there is a limitation to what we would feel would be, you know, proper. You know, so there really might be a final stamp in that sense, but still. And, and even to, during that process, we're talking about us reading and reading, but even during that process, where we have the meetings, you review with those are public. So anybody who wants to come out to speak to those meetings is welcome to. I agree, but I, I want to I follow up on a point that Chris just said, which is a, a very good point. We, we have been in meetings that we've all been seating, sit, sitting in that treads on water that shouldn't be talked on, yeah. whether it be security at this, at this property, whether it's procedures at the jail, and so forth. So it should be set up in a way so that that, that gleam that you're talking about uh, it, there might not be so much that may need to be held back just a hair or put yeah. somewhere else. Yeah. But when we start doing the jail and other right. things and the nursing home with yeah. privacy concerns, so I think it's a good point. Um, it seems to me, we, we don't say this, I think we're thinking it, that we also need to present it to the, to the county administrators or the county um, commissioners. commissioners, thank you, before we give it to everybody else. I mean, when we say present the report and findings to the next public meeting of the delegation. We never mention the commissioners. Well, maybe just increase the number of copies then? This is the final General. report. Right. Yeah. Increase the number of copies it adds? I mean, I don't think it matters who makes the copies, but. Right. No, give them a copy. 
know what he's saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. After the thought. Hmm. I, I think we could handle that, Tom. If, if we don't need to write it out, I think we can handle it number four. If the if we feel that it's necessary for the commissioners to see that, then the contact person can make that happen in number four. Okay. I'll just make 18 copies, and they can do whatever they yeah, want to write. The more copies out, the less effective number five is going to be. Right. But we can, we can decide how to do one copy. And <laughs> yeah. I just Make want, the rest of them ourselves. want to just add a reminder that we're really looking to um, have an open process where people, it's a discovery process, it's a learning process, and it's a sharing process. And I don't want it to, to I don't want our minds to start coloring it as kind of an investigative secret thing. No, but you can have you can have just the opposite happen. You could have you could go through all this work and it's independently done and some great work's done, and then this whole thing gets released ahead of time, or by someone that does a twist to it or something. So it, it's an open, it's an independent thing, but we're gonna we're gonna have that meeting and at that meeting it's gonna come forward. And I, th I think there'll be a, a lot of. Good discussion no. by delegation with commissioners and the public at that meeting. Because I, I don't, you know, I don't see this just the commissioners is just step one of what nine steps or whatever, you know, as as we work through it. Because I don't think there's any department that I know every department should benefit from having an independent look. So, okay, we all second okay. to move on from that. Yep. Uh, section number five um, really is. So the ripples. One question I had was in the firm submitting proposals. Uh, I've been directed by both to both of these groups by uh, I had talked with the head of the uh, legislative budget division, um, audit division, and he recommended these look at these two groups to me. Um, the uh, New Hampshire Society of CPAs um, is basically. New Hampshire based. Um, the uh, Board of Accountancy has both an in-state and out-of-state division and I think um, from what I saw the, uh, uh, the Commissioner has just awarded a financial audit RFP to a Maine firm. Um, but I checked and they were certified by the Board of Accountancy as, as, long as an out-of-state. As long as by putting this in here we're not ensuring that nobody's looking at this except the not truly Except financial accounts. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to bring that point up too. I mean, there's a number of business consulting firms that, that could do a marvelous job of this audit. And I don't I think, think we should let them apply if they want to. Yeah. And I did have a question on the second sentence here. Uh, how do you determine what a sufficient sign is? There's a, yeah, I think the. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, well, I do like the word should. <laughs> should be a member. That doesn't have to be. Should be. But, you know, or. Um, or certified by them? Well, there's a. You can be a. I think it's the. I don't there's think there's certified be managerial be accountants. There's. There's. There's, there's things other than certified public accountants, so you might um, have some. Um, you might be able to come up with that because, you know, a, a, technically a certified public accountant might know nothing about right. how to run a business. Yeah, they just right. know this how. Is not really a financial. You know. um, yeah. This is the um, response I got from the director of audits for the legislative budget assistant, which is financial. Right. But his first paragraph is, our office does not keep a list of certified public accounting firms that conduct financial and performance audits. My suggestion is that you contact the New Hampshire Society of Certified Public Accountants and or the State of New Hampshire Board of Accountancy. Tom, um, did you mean to put accountants in this line here? It says accounts. Do you mean accountants? <coughs> uh, which accounts? Yeah. 
Yes, one, two, that's right. Two. I, I th I, I'm thinking the question when it was phrased was, as, as Harry's brought up, is that um, <coughs> budget is, you know, they're, they're thinking more in terms of um, finances and so forth. And I, I think, I, I don't think it should be our first bullet point with what we're looking for for our qualification. I don't think it should be in there at all. I think it would be a good well, I think, I think I've got business auditors and... I mean, if you can explain what you need without specifying a certain group, I think. Let's let's take a longer look at it. I don't I don't I don't think it I don't think calling out CPAs in when it says should, but it's bullet number one. Yeah. I I think that as as you've mentioned, there's other companies that might yeah. be doing this. Let's let's not have them throw the document away. To be done by some experienced company that does this sort of thing. Let's, let's, yeah. let's look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And they, and or, they, uh, sorry, I was just going to say in that line, you said should be a member of the Hampshire Society or certified mm -hmm. public honors, or have a proven track record in this yeah. performance audits of counties. You know, I, don't, if you can I, show don't even like, I don't even like the certified accountants in there for the cycle. I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's me, but well, a lot of, a lot of times, too, so <laughs> well, a lot of times but, these and people I, come yeah. from firms that are CPA no, firms. No, I, I understand that, but it's just a, I, I just but they don't necessarily yeah. should, but not limited to yeah. or something. Yeah. yeah, and many CPA firms have have business consulting, consulting yeah, sections. Good. And that's okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but you know, just, so just, maybe it's just the way it's written. Yeah, but it, it, it seems to be, it seems to me that we're excluding them. Pure business consultants. Yeah, that's what it sounds like to me too. And I don't think, and I think they should be included. Yeah. Right. And I think anybody that submits submits a proposal should be forwarding us uh, one or two of their performance audits that they have. Oh, we've asked for that. Whatever, right. Whatever. Yeah, they already asked for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah they, they're providing us with an example of their audit. Okay. Right. Yeah, the third bullet point. So I, that that one we have to work on more. And I, the way the way I read it, Glenn, is we're saying that it's got to be CPAs. It's got to be a major firm or a certified firm. Where I, I think the point is, and I think part of our discussion right along has been that there might be some other companies that are out there that could do just as well a job for us. Okay. Um, then uh, next session section really just. Um, you know, looking for information about their um, experience, both in terms of the, the firm and the staff. I, I got a question on that, though. On the, that one bullet says resumes and references, and then you got parentheses from government sources. Why do I care whether their resumes and references are from government sources or not, as long as they're good, qualified references? Um, just because it's, we're, we're, you know, it's a government world audit. We're looking at not that's you know what, an that's audit what, of that's what bothers me to be quite frank with you. <laughs> so we, we can certainly strike that. I'd like to we'll that right out. Out. Let's roll it. Love experience of those persons to be assigned. Yeah, I like that better. Now same way with no Another one, they have met CPE requirements for government auditing. I'm not sure that that should be here. Yeah. Let's, uh, let's kind of underline it and see as we move forward with our next meeting with where we think this, what should be included in the performance on if that's one of the things we can do. Yes, uh, how about the uh, firms not having significant track record in the way of litigation and lawsuits. Okay. Well, I don't know to really prove their credibility. Is that you? So, uh, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think how it could work that in. Um, do you think that's a viable point? It certainly is a viable point. There's no argument there. <laughs> the question of whether or not that is some, just part of our due diligence, as part of the process of the evaluation of them. Well, certainly you wouldn't want a firm that's been reckless in the past to uh, oversee the affairs of the county. Absolutely. But 
Well, that was part of the reason it. to have the references from the three governmental, you know, yeah. to right, the, and but certification. But those particular so points may not have been included in the reference. Well, that's why you look at a, um, I think we got the recommendation from the Legislative Budget Assistance Office about, uh, you know, someone who's been certified, certified. Okay. so that they don't, you know, because they're going to lose their certification if they've been sued for, you know, breach of contract or yeah. right. malfeasance of some kind. You would. I got a PE. I'd be very careful where I stay off the I'll think about that. Yeah, we let's, let's go on. Yeah. So I just want to know, is it customary for um, organization like we are to reserve the right to reject staff? Absolutely. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I've been involved in processes where we've asked for a different project manager or something like that. Yeah, definitely. Let me ask you a question on this, if I'm not company has to be on number five yesterday. We can be. Okay. <laughs> uh, the first thing it says not to exceed maximum price for the services described in the scope. And then it says other fees. Shouldn't the total number of fees not exceed it? Never mind those other stuff. Yeah, I questions in my own mind. Um, I think I borrowed some of that language from Yeah. Because we don't want, I mean that's it. That, yeah. That's it. Period. Yeah. Cross out the other fees. Yeah. Uh, back up to number four, and I think we should put this in wherever appropriate. Proposed timeline for audit. Let's make. Let's go. Proposed timeline for performance audit. This so is sliding we, to the left too. Yeah. 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 So every everywhere performance and audit yeah, appear yeah. together. So yeah. we don't leave the yeah. impression yeah. that we're just yeah. purely doing a financial audit, yeah. even though that's our intent. I'm assuming um, under six with uh, those, that's boilerplate from other things. That was, why, um, why do we care about motor vehicle insurance? Uh, basically, this was boilerplate. I, I took it from um, the RFP that the uh, county just issued for a financial audit. Live for your dive time, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Live for your dive, no insurance, what do you think? No, I, I, just, I just think that. that, that I assume the county has non-owned automobile insurance. I used to work for an insurance company. Yep. I assume the county has non-owned auto insurance beyond, and presumably the the vendor will too. And I don't see otherwise why we care whether they have motor vehicle insurance or not. Yeah, well, you, you, you'd have to check that. But the only thing that I could see happen is if, if you had a truck and it was carrying things for the county, it was going something for the audit, you got an accident, maybe there'd be some, there'd be an attorney somewhere who could find a way to sue you. Absolutely, but that's why we need not yeah. on auto. No, 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 yeah, which would, which the county may already have. And that would cover yeah. us, the, the non-owned automobile for them would just cover them, yeah, not us. Them, yeah. um, you know, we could ask, right, we you know, why that, you know, maybe it was a legal recommendation for the audit they just did, because that was in the, uh, the RFP for the financial audit. I mean, I don't care whether it's in there or not, particularly, but I would hate for somebody to lose out just because they had five hundred thousand. Why don't uh, Why don't you shoot me over an email asking me the question? And we'll ask the commissioners that, and then I'm going to be able to we'll pull that out of there, if if that's indeed the case. Because I agree, when you're looking at this and more items like that, I and mean, maybe it's a smaller smaller firm with great reputation, we don't want that taken out. But I think your, your questions are a good one to ask them. So, so in, in your in your experience on uh, insurance, what's what's the next paragraph? Oh, like uh, absolutely. Okay. Yes. Errors and omissions coverage. 
That's fine. Okay. Yeah, in the 30 day notice. And it's fine. This is how I was when I was a kid. I, had, I, had I think number seven, we already have cover. We already have, so it should be able to strike. I can work with some people. Oh, he's a dog. Good job. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Good job. <laughs> you know, the last two points were uh, boilerplate from other RFPs that I've review. Um, and then the, the last major piece that I have um, that I think that we need some discussion on is uh, the evaluation criteria. I wanted to, uh, rather than just leave it open as to how we were going to choose uh, a winning vendor, I thought it was uh, worthwhile and, and a lot of the RFPs that I looked at did have some kind of evaluation criteria. So, uh, uh, you know, I came up with this um, in terms of, you know, the, the three, um, three points and the number of points awarded for each um, is certainly open to uh, discussion and uh, change. And you envision, before I go to you, Tom, you envision that we would we would share that ev evaluation criteria with the applicants. Yeah. I've seen I've seen I've seen that done in most places I've yeah, ever yeah, put out yeah. for. A, I think you have to. Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. Okay, Tom, I'm sorry. You uh, I just I just on this I think this number here is 35. What? Yes, 35. Points. Yeah. But basically, the, the three criteria were the work plan, you know, looking at, uh, you know, what the firm set out to do. Um, second was experience and qualifications, um, which was a slightly lower point award for that criteria. And then the third area was uh, contract cost. Um, which I put on equal footing with the work plan. Um, and the contract cost has a, um, a formula attached um, that I found that I thought worked well um, to, um, so the lowest price would get full 35 points, and then each other firm would get slightly less points um, based on this formula. So. It seems to me that experience and qualifications is a little over pointed. Um, 35 points was it? No, it's 30, 30, 30, 30 points. 30 points. What would, what would your thought be? I don't know, 20 points. And where would you put the other points? Five and five. So it would be 40, 20, 40. That's what I would give you. I mean, not to. Oh, okay. Right. So the biggest firm doesn't necessarily have the junk. So we need to, if I remember right, we need to uh, start pulling uh, background information from the commission. We might as well have them start pulling that at this point in time. That could take a while. Um, were, were you going to contact them in relation to that? Would you like to do that? Okay. <laughs> I can. Well, let's, if, if this is our list, I'll, I'll contact them in an email because I'm following up with uh, Representative Lavender's question on the insurance. And we're going to all take some time with um, scope of work. With what? Scope of work, scope items of, work. of scope of work shall include. Mm -hmm.
Anything else anybody sees at this point? I'm thinking, I know that uh, we're trying to do a delegation meeting somewhere in, uh, in September. But that's what I think so. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to be physically out of the area for a while. So uh, maybe the first week in September, and once we get through the holiday, let's. Um, oh, first Monday is So maybe the uh, ninth, the week after, would that be? Okay. You shouldn't have anybody still at your place by then, should you? No, we not home. So. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody. Yeah, leave their money in the home, yeah. right? Is 10, <laughs> 10, is 10 o'clock agreeable? Does that work for everyone? Yeah. All right, so let's, uh, let's, let's slate our next meeting for 10 o'clock. Just say that. Ninth. Over oh, in the next building, presumably. Uh, that's not a Wednesday. It's a Monday, so we should be there. Yeah. All right. Fantastic.